and it was born in inner city. That, that, that's one of the things that makes inner city so important because I got a chance to do this at inner city. If I had, would have had the straight mounted, I couldn't have done it. But at inner city, I saw the magic that these kids and people created and I knew I couldn't let it close. And so I brought it to the Henry Fonda. But it was born in inner city. Mr. Anderson, does the encyclopedia have anything about the theater? Oh, yes, a very extensive section, Thelma. It covers James Baldwin, Lorraine Hansberry, has biographies of Marian Anderson, Leontine Price, Paul oh, Rose. Well, for me, the cultural center is a place, it's my cultural home. Um, I've been associated with the center for five years now, off and on. The first show I did here was Ana Locasta, and I'm in autumn heat now. Inner city is a place for everyone. It's a place for the beginner. It's a place for the professional. Anyone who belongs to the cen center, it gives them an opportunity to be a family. Um, we're all working together to put a production on, to be the best we can be with what we have. Um, I just enjoy it. The industry is a difficult industry, and sometimes you're hot, you know, in this industry, and sometimes you're cooler. And in those times, um, the center is a place where you can express yourself artistically. You enjoy contributing to a community like this um, because you're appreciated. And when you're appreciated as an artist, you become more creative. <laughs> it's true. And I just find this place an enlightenment to me. I wish we had more time. <laughs> what were you going to say, Mom? I was going to ask Miss Drayton how her mother and father reacted to... A veteran of stage and screen with such classic films to her credit as Guess Who's Coming to Dinner, Bea Richards has been a part of the inner city family of celebrities since the early days. I have been an affiliate of the center for the last 22 years, and it has been my cultural home. I had the opportunity of publishing with this institution my first book of poetry and, uh, and winning my first Emmy Area Award for A Black Woman Speaks that was uh, directed by C. Bernard Jackson and developed here at the Inner City Cultural Center. So that it has been um, the center that I just wouldn't like to have to do without. The list of celebrated personalities that have graced the stages of inner city is extensive. The childish pranks, the water balloons, the itching powder, even the plastic duty. <laughs> I, mean, I, 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 I can't stop it. I really can't. Inside me, there's a real... Named in honor of the late Elaine Koshki, one of the center's first administrators, the Elaine Koshki Arts Award is annually given to people from various backgrounds for their contributions to community theater and the minority community.
In May 1989, Inner City purchased the Ivar Theater. When the seating capacity exceeds 99, a theater must abide by equity union guidelines. The Ivar, located in the heart of historic Hollywood, will bring to the center equity status, as well as the ability to house long-running productions. But the main activities of the center will continue to take place at the old Masonic Hall near Pico and Vermont. City Cultural Center. It is neither the Dorothy Chandler Pavilion, nor is it the Mark Taper Forum. It is not the Lincoln Center of New York, nor the Kennedy Center of Washington, D.C. Like all of these places, however, Inner City is indeed a national artistic treasure. It is not too black, it is not too political. This may be the key to the center's survival. It is not just valuable to a nation of African Americans, but to America as a whole. Talent knows no racial boundaries. There is as much talent in this room as you'll find on any stage in this city. And the struggle to have that talent exposed to the public has been a great uphill fight. But you have the tenacity. You have not given up. The Inner City Cultural Center is just one example of that kind of struggle and the kind of faith that it takes. You are the, the last outpost for some. You are the entry point for many who have tried to break into an acting career, simply didn't have the support or the resources or the access to get it done. Here, you can find hope. Here, you can get encouragement. So I think, I am indebted to you. This city is indebted to you for what you have done. There are new generations being created, and those new generations are very soon going to be handed a legacy, and I'm grateful for the fact that we have a legacy to present to them. A legacy an oasis that caters to the cultural thirst of groups within groups of people. One that will not dry up because the people who take from it return time and again to replenish it. It's an oasis of artistic fertility in a world that can often be as cruel as the desert itself, offering revitalization and impetus to any traveler on that desert who could not cross it otherwise. You've got several theaters out in L.A., you know, but they don't particularly want you. And any city says, yes, it's a place where we want you, we need you, we need your creativity. And it feels good to have a home like that. And it's important to keep these doors open.